most end users don't have a clue as to what the weight of the load is. And and it might not be their own fault. It might be just, there is no way to say, okay, this weighs 2000 pounds, right? They don't have a scale. So they typically, they'll grab the, the smallest hoist because that's the easiest to carry. Mm-hmm. They'll hook up and they'll start making their lift. Now, a couple, there's three scenarios. One, it makes the lift. Two, it doesn't make the lift. And three, something fails. Chain breaks, hooks open up. And so um, this overload protection, the beauty of it was that it was repeatable. And so let's say you got into a situation where you're making the lift and you realize, man, I've, this is not, I'm into the overload. It's not letting me make the lift. You can, you can, the brake still holds, you put it in neutral, put it in lower, lower, the lower, the load, release the load and the hoist goes right back into service. So it doesn't need to come out of service because it's, it's indicated that, that it's been overloaded. And it and it's it gives the operator a chance to say, I gotta go get a bigger hoist. And the beauty of of our Oz uh hoist with overload is one, they're price competitive to those that don't have it. Mm. Two, it it virtually does away with part sales. Most hoists are are in the parts bin getting reworked because they've been overloaded. Right. So that does away with that. And from a safety director standpoint, how how wonderful is that to t- to tell their they're, they're people that, Hey, you know, if you did guess wrong, you're not going to get hurt, which is going to be my priority. And we're, you're not, you're, you don't have to take the hoist out of service and, and repair it. So it's really a win, win, win along the whole line of youth.